and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I make my uh, oil paintings, my Bob Ross oil paintings. I have this box here uh, and under this box there is a drawer and here I have all my oil paints. I only have a few basic colors then I have some few uh, paint brushes. A few of them I have been uh, doing different things to to make them uh, work able for me. I have my uh, palette knife in miniature. I have this cake tin that I used for that and then just made a handle of polymer clay. That was some wrist clay. Let's close this one up for a second. Then on this top I have this uh, hinge right here that I can uh, open and then I have my place for placing my painting. I can open this little holder down here so I can have my painting lying on it. Today I'm going to work on my flat surface so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm placing this, uh, this is just a cutting mat, cutting board. I'm placing that just to make sure that everything is working okay. And I am going to take my paintings and place it on that and then I can paint. And so. then when I'm cleaning my pencil I am using this clear oil paint. It's a liquid and that's what I'm using for uh, cleaning my paintbrush as I can't have other kinds of uh, cleaning things around me uh, caused by the smell. I 3D printed this little plate here for uh, paint so that I have it all in one place and there uh, it's small enough for me to have around. It's not too big and bulky. And I'm going to place a link in the info box below for the video that I'm going to use for this painting that I'm doing today. Here you can see a few that I already made. Uh, some of them are great, some of them are not so great. Uh, and I'm still learning because uh, it's quite hard in this uh, little size. So here I have a piece of paper that has the size of a painting. I took a standard uh, normal wall painting and divided it by 12 and I got this little one here out of it. And you can see here I have some that has the double size because I wanted to make some that is a little bigger as well. Okay, so um, let me get set up and then we will start on the painting. Oh, let's see, I'm going to take this one I think. So first of all I'm gonna dip my brush in the oil and I'm going to take some of the white here. And I'm going to Put that all over this little frame. There we go. And I always, oh you can't see that, but I always take my brush and I am putting these at the side. I need them later. I am going on the paper first, then dipping it in the oil to clean it up and then back on the paint, uh, on the paper here to get out the rest of the color. I'm going to start with a little bit of phthalo blue, a tiny bit of Van Dyke brown mixed with it. Okay, we'll just start right up in here. So you need to blend it out 
that is kind of uh, difficult on these small things. ones. They're very, very easy to overwork. So I'm always doing a few things on my own here just to make it look a bit better. Um, my paintings are never uh, just the same as Bob Ross, but um, I really do learn a lot of these paintings from him. So here and there I do a few things on my own, like this, just placing a little more of the dark blue in the skies here. So I'm always going back and forth until I like what I uh, have done. Like here I don't like that I don't have so much white in it. A little less perfect. So I'm just going back in there with a little more and trying to blend it in and make it look like I want it to. And then when I'm happy with the result of it, then I'm just going on doing the ne next steps of the painting. I think this is, is what I like. And here he want me to take the clean one and blend it. But the problem with that is when it's so small, you will just blend it into one color, so I'm always uh, skipping this step as much as possible. Uh, so as you see, I just made a few strokes here and there to make it look, uh, look a little more blended. Okay, we are back to the uh, palette knife, so I am going to take some of the white here and place it, take it up with my knife and then we use it where we think there could be some light on these mountains. Today it's not snow, but light. So it takes a little brown and a little blue for some shading. So I'm just going to do that and it's like the opposite way from what we just did. So um, I'm going to take a little of my light brown this time, some more of the dark brown, and then with uh, the blue, mix it together. And now we are going to make an almighty mountain.
And now we are going to take the fan brush. I have again this little uh, dirty brush. I have this little brush that I again uh, pushed flat and I actually uh, trimmed off a few of uh, the brushes on there. So I like this one. And um, I'm just going to load it with some of the color. And it's uh, quite stiff and that's why it is actually really, really good. Take some of it off again and then he wants some uh, trees in here. So I am going to take some of my white and place into this oil. Uh, that's a little tricky here. To make some magic white. Um, and then I'm just taking some of it off uh, with this palette knight and I'm going straight down making these white lines here keep these lines basically straight so the water doesn't run out of the painting nothing's worse than having a wet floor because the water ran out of your painting I think I'm going to use this brush again. So he's going to uh, use some of this color again and make a tree over here. Oh, let's see how far down he goes. Pretty long. So he's using a large brush here. I have this one where I cut off the uh, bristles so it's uh, really nice and flat. So I'm going to use that one. So I am going to load it and pop in these. Uh, so, and what we have 
paint on the brush, just reverse it and drop some right into the water. That'll end up being our reflection. So again some yellow and the green and more of the yellow than of the green and I'm just gonna take a little of it off and then he makes some really nice bright yellow bushes here and as you see it's not that easy And that part I'm gonna skip. Brown, white. He is making a brown part going down here like a stone. Uh, I'm not gonna do that because this already is uh, quite full. Um, I have a few problems with that last tree here, the one over in this side. Uh, let's see what I can do. And he's making even more yellowish here at the bottom of this tree over here. So I'm just going to take this one and some yellow and make a little here. Then he just keeps working on it and um, placing a few sticks and so. Um, I think I have more than enough in this little one. Uh, it got really dark and I kind of like it. So anyway, I hope you can see it here on camera as it is really, really dark. It takes around a week to dry all the way up. Uh, and you can uh, keep working on it for a few hours uh, until you're totally satisfied. I see my uh, back mountain here is gone. Anyway, um, that is how I am doing it. I'm using all these uh, pencils and tools that I created myself because normal pencils are way too big and I'm not um, trying to make his picture a perfect copy in 1 to 12. I'm trying to make it into something that I like. I hope you like this. I am going to take a few pictures so you can see it. For my cleaning of this paletti, I am just going to take a piece of paper and I'm going to wipe up or off as much of uh, the color as possible. This way my paletti is as clean as can be. Uh, and it will dry fairly quickly. Uh, the paint brushes I am just uh, first going to make sure I don't have much paint on them. Then I am dipping it in my oil. I have it here next to me. And then cleaning, dipping, 
cleaning and making sure that it is not uh, full of color at the end. It should be a clean oil. And that's the paintbrush. So I'm doing that with all my paintbrushes. Thank you for watching. Happy crafting.